apart james 1 21 wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive the meekness receive with with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls so the word of god is called the engrafted word the words of god on a page cannot help you but once they are engrafted in your heart i will write my laws on your heart the engrafted word will save your souls will save you spirit soul and mind we are saved eternally spiritually amen this body is not saved yet it will be saved at the time it receives the incorruptibility to this for this body to receive incorruption and immortality then and hence we are going to be saved in our bodies with no more sicknesses with no more anything that provokes pain on it or anything of the like amen receive but first we have to remove something wherefore lay apart the first the second is not taking place until the first first takes place the engrafted word is able to save your souls this is god's part and he is always faithful first portion of verse 21 is our part of responsibility and we we me and you we are not always faithful but once we make sure we do our part be assured god will do his part because his faithfulness in the past is his faithfulness in the future i cannot say that for me neither can you say that for you we haven't been faithful in everything in the past therefore nobody not even me to me not you to you or to anybody can be uh, an assure uh, an assurance of our faithfulness in the future in fact for as long as we live in this body in this flesh we are subject to fall and we don't want to fall in jesus name by his grace we will not i will to go to the end he is able to keep that which i have committed unto him against until the day amen so this is an orientation of our new course in theology and ethics and you might say well what does this really have to do with either theology or ethics and i will explain to you what exactly it has to be it, it is connected with the verse i want you to first notice is verse seven for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the lord verse eight a double-minded man is unstable on in all his ways what does this have to do with ethics nothing right as we think as we know so far but today in studying the terminology and going back to the etymology in greek uh, for the word ethics if it is a greek word if from ethos even in english there is a word ethos and ethical and ethics and ethic in construction uh, grammatically speaking building in grammar it, it is used in plural but there is an ethic it can be singular or it can be plural usually it is referred to as plural and it's the set of morals now what does that have to do with this ethics 
with always receiving from God and being stable in our lives. It has everything to do. And let me explain to you why. Theology and ethics. First of all, a little bit of orientation. I gave you an announcement on Sunday that explains everything you need to know about the registering, those that are here, our church in Rhodes, and all of those that are watching us via internet, you can even register via internet directly from the link provided to you at www.wacojc.com. A-C-O-J-C stands for Apostolic Church of Jesus Christ. A-C-O-J-C dot com and go to Revelation Bible School and there you can register for this course. Amen. And make sure at the end you will receive, you must receive, and if you forget you please remind us. You will receive detailed notes, student notes, and a test, except if you are a noted student, you just want to uh, systematically be attending, not be uh, the course, receiving everything, the notes, but not a test. But if you're a full registered student, you will receive a test at the end of the course, and then you will receive the certificate of completion of this course. Otherwise, a certificate of attendance. Otherwise, if you don't want to register, don't register. It is open to everyone. If I were you, I would. In fact, I search in many places to find a school to go and pay, to work and pay. I search every, everywhere when I was a student. I was in university and yet I was searching for a theological school and for another school by correspondence. So I was thirsty. I was paying to find a school. Today, at least one of the schools, I wouldn't go if I knew what I want to know today. So you're blessed to have everything ready for you. In this, all, all these 30 years of experience and filtering the word of God for you so that you will receive it, rightly divided with the word of God and rightly divided with the body of Christ. And as we said, our school and catechism school has been fused together in Revelation Bible School so that this is the ACOJC, the Apostolic Church of Jesus Christ Bible School of Theology, Biblical Studies, and Apologetics. Because in every course, regardless of what else we analyze or field of study we are engaged in, we are going to deal always with theology. You might say, why always? Because God is the most important person to us. And we need to know him. We need to know his character, attributes, and all that has to do with our God. So theology will always be there. Biblical studies will always be there because we started to show our Serves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Fully, rightly dividing the word of truth. And also apologetics because by this we learn how to defend our faith. The Bible doesn't need any defend. It is the truth. It stands by itself. This is the word of God. We need to have an answer. We need to defend what we believe. Most students going to the university, and that's out of statistics, most youth leave the church once they are freshmen in university. This means first year in university. Why we lose so many students? Because they haven't done the course you've done in cosmology, philosophy, theology, and apologetics. Something like that in which we didn't study all of cosmology, all of astronomy, you need 10 years to do that. But we gave you a biblical approach 
how to give an answer from the Bible, how to take their statement, show the foolishness of it, of the worldly wisdom of this world, and then give them back the biblical truth, and we found and gave you the questions for which they don't have answers. This makes it difficult. It's a quick approach, and that was our approach. And still you continue in that way. Now, in theology, we will study in depth the ontology. Ontology is from the Greek word on, Exodus 3.14. God is responding to Moses when he's intimidated, when he receives an assignment for, from the Lord to go to Israel and tell them what God said. And Moses in his frustration says, Lord, who shall I say sent me? And God answers in Genesis, in Exodus 3.14. Exodus 3.14. He says, tell them, I am that I am have sent you. Doesn't do any sense to the physical mind. I am that I am, not I am that I was, not that I am that I will be, even though he was and he is and he will be. I am that I am touches future, touches past, his eternity past, his future future, he's the father of the future, he's the beginning and the ending, he's the alpha and the omega, he's the aleph and the tav and the mem, mem stands for truth, the Alpha, the beginning and the ending and the truth. <laughs> and everything was created by him and nothing was created was not created without him. Everything was created by him and sustained by him. John 1, 3, Colossians 1, 16 and 17. The reason I'm giving you verses, it's not to show you that I know them. I proved that. I said it vice versa about John 16, 8, even though I knew it. I stop until we listen to what uh, people that watch us hear. Amen. It's okay. It's me preaching again. Amen. But it's very important to understand the ontology of God. Amen. It happens to give you the wrong scripture, but even though I knew it, but anything, anyway, uh, at that time, I didn't know it. So it changed. Like Hosea uh, 4, 6 and 6, 6. And some other verses, we get them wrong. But anyway, you need the reference. And again, I'm saying, I give you the references when I know, when I think I know, so that you have... The final authority. Amen. Or I'll give you the chapter if I don't know the verse. Or I'll give you the book. Or I'll say the word of God says. But anyway, that's the reason we do it. I want to be biblical. So I have to support it. So excuse me for any mix mistakes. We can correct them. The word of God doesn't do any mistakes. But we need verse and scripture. And when you talk with somebody, ask them. Give them Give me verse and scripture to believe you. Okay? So, praise the Lord. We will study the ontology of God from the Greek word on, which means the one who is self-existing. He needs nobody to exist. We will study his attributes, his character, and nature of God. And having this as a foundation, knowing who God is, remember, we need to know who God is to be engaged in hermeneutics. You cannot interpret the scripture unless you first know the character of God. And you can never know the character of God unless you have a personal relationship with God and you can never have a relationship with 
the Almighty God unless you've been born again by the Spirit of God and you can never be born again unless you plead guilty of your sin and you plead the blood of Jesus Christ for your righteousness and you receive the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart and you made him the absolute Lord, Savior, Redeemer in your life and you declare he is who he is in your life. Amen. So having this foundation of who God is in theology, we continue with ethics, which is a completely different uh, field of theological studies. Ethics, talking about Christian ethics. Having this as our foundation for our study in Christian ethics, we will move into finding out the Lord's divine guidance on handling all kinds of situations. Everybody has questions. I have questions. You have questions. In fact, there are sometimes we don't know what to do. Do you remember anybody in the scripture to say that? Second Chronicles 2020. Lord, I know not what to do. Great King of Israel, Jehoshaphat. But our eyes are fixed upon you. I don't know what to do. All of us find ourselves in these cases and places. And when you find yourselves before governors in these places or these persons, think not what to say because the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus says, will give you the exact words of what to say. So, we depend on him all the time. And thus we understand the part of the prayer of the Lord, the Lord's prayer as we call it, did, which is our prayer, our layout of prayer that says, give us this daily our weekly bread, or our daily bread. Why daily? Because tomorrow I should be and I will be and I must be in the place that I need the word of God again. So not always you will have all the answers. You might be reading and studying, going there for your debate and you remember nothing. And you don't touch even the subject you studied. Or like in the university when we first went to Greece, studying our studies back in the 80s. I was studying for two months, I think, or four months, something like that. Huge amount of time continuously for a course about law. And here comes my wife who was doing two schools at the same time. University, you, if you wanted, you attended. And the other school was mandatory, so my wife was going to one school full-time, doing the other, what she could do with it, the university. So anyway, she studied 20 minutes and got 7 out of 10. They had us in one classroom, 8 different tests. Eight different tests. And I was studying for two months or four months, I don't remember. One of the two. And for whatever I studied, there was not a question about it in my test. And my wife, out of the eight different tests, she got the one test that she scored so high which she studied for just 20 minutes. That's not fair, my wife. Then my wife can say, that's not fair, my husband. In the university in the States, I was studying and you were passing the courses. That's why I begged her, take the same courses with me. You study, I pass. So that's the deal. Amen. 
But you see, you cannot depend on your much study. You must depend not on luck or randomly on chance. You must depend consciously on God. And that's part of ethics, right? Otherwise, the one who's, some of them are called uh, walking Bibles or they know 15,000 scriptures by heart. And you say, I want to be like that one. You may never be like that one. And that one might, ha might be having a problem with his pride, knowing so much knowledge, having so much knowledge that puffs up. Amen? It's the word of God. But if you, if you manage to just uh, memorize scripture, don't forget that's in your mind and that's knowledge that can puff you up. You must learn the word of God in your heart. So somebody who doesn't memorize scripture that well, it doesn't mean that he doesn't know the word of God. He might know the word of God, but not the scripture. So I encourage you though to study the word of God, make it part of your life and learn the scriptures too. But it's part of ethics, godly divine ethics to stand before anyone. And depend on the Holy Spirit and prayerfully whisper, Holy Spirit, help me. Because if you don't help me, they will knock me out. For your glory, let me, the moron, the oxymoron, the foolish of this world that you chose to confound the wise, let it be done for your glory that the wise of this world will be confounded by somebody who is nobody. But you are everything. Amen. God is all in all in us. So having this in mind, who God is, knowing his character in Christian ethics, we find out the Lord's divine guidance on handling all kinds of situations. In this physical life, through the character and nature of God, that's ethics. To teach others and teach yourselves about the nature of God as the Holy Spirit enables us to live a godly life. Amen? These things we learn in ethics, which is what Paul said, I am an imitator of Jesus Christ, be ye imitators of me that's ethics that's christian ethics that's the character of god that we can observe in our leaders in those who spiritually lead us so it's biblical to follow our leaders when our leaders are following the lord I know we cannot expand too much, but I want you to get very strong foundation. And in this orientation seminar today, I want you to find out what ethics is, what theology is, what theology and ethics is in connection and in juxtaposition and in working together. Amen. What ethics is? That's what ethics is. Now, should you follow men? Is it ethical to follow men? Yes. Do we need to? Yes. Why? Because God put them there to lead us. But for those who, of us that are Greek, and those of you who know Romans 8, you must remember 8.14, which says, those who are led by the Holy Spirit are the sons of God. How can we tell if somebody is led by the Holy Spirit? If he or she is led by the Holy Spirit. How do we know if somebody is led by the Holy Spirit? If they practice the word of God. If 
we see the anointing of the Holy Spirit on them that enables them to walk like nobody else walks. No physical person can walk. That's ethics. Christian life is not just difficult. It is impossible to live. So it's not a matter of effort. But it's an absolute matter of yielding. Surrendering completely to the Holy Spirit and his guidance. So those who are led by the Holy Spirit are the sons of God. Who are the sons of God? Talking about men and women, children of God. Who are the sons of God? Those who are led by the Holy Spirit. Who are those who are led by the Holy Spirit? Those who walk in Christian ethics. Led. What's the Greek word for led there? Osi agonde. Via pnevma dosagiu. From the word ago, omega, rima. Which means lead. Those that know Greek tell me is there any connection between holiness and leadership? In English, nothing. In Greek, listen to this Agios, Agiosini, holiness, holy. Que odigos, from the verb ago, leader. So leaders are supposed to be holy men of God who lead you into holiness, towards holiness, and towards a Christian life with practicing Christian ethics. Any connection between leaders leadership holy and holiness absolutely our leaders should be holy amen it's the same root i studied the etymology and everything it's the same root with ayos ago and also it's the same root with agnos those who have this hope in them which hope the hope of the rapture They purify themselves. Agnizus in eaftus. You see the connection there? Holy, holiness, sanctification, leader, leadership. All of these have to do with Christian ethics. How to be led by the Holy Spirit, enabled by the Holy Spirit. To live a God kind of life in this life. The character, the nature of God. The Holy Spirit enables us. And the fruit of the Spirit is. Galatians 5.22. At home study the works of the flesh. Galatians 5.19. The works of the flesh. And juxtapose them. The works of the flesh, the, the works of the spirit, or the, the, the fruit of the spirit. I know you heard and I heard and I preached and I taught and I said, this is the work, the fruit of our spirit. Is it really not connected with the Holy Spirit? Who is giving you that kind of fruit anyway? Who is the source of this fruit anyway? God is not dead. He is there. And today we receive whatever he gave us 2,000 years ago. Amen. Even though the Holy Spirit, yes, he doesn't have to bring forth fruit. But he's the source along with the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Father, who is our triune God, our source. All of our sources are in you, my God. We receive it. So the fruit of the Spirit is the fruit that you must 
exhibit in your life daily life I must and I need much work on that but the source is the Holy Spirit so we can say both that this is the fruit indeed of the Holy Spirit which is love joy peace and they go by threes gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance agape hara irini macrosmia christodida agathosini peste praudis and gratia love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness meekness faith temperance the first three have to do with the relationship between us and our God. Love, joy, and peace. Long suffering, gentleness, goodness. Second three have to deal with our relationship with our fellow man. And the third three, three all. The third three. Faith, meekness, temperance have to do with our relationship intra within ourselves. Meekness, temperance, proudness, business, and gratia, faith, meekness, temperance. This is Christian ethics. Amen. We should live such a life enabled by the Holy Spirit to help us live a godly life permeated with God's laws of ethics according to the constitution of heaven. And as we read in Matthew 6, 10, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven and in applying christian ethics you say through me lord use me lord thy will be done in heaven thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven use me to bring it down to this earth that's christian ethics and theology amen father we thank you for this first orientation seminar lesson of our new course theology and ethics we want to walk in the newness of life knowing you personally and knowing you deeply having a personal relationship that goes deep and deeper and deeper and having as a platform our relationship with you and knowledge of you to build a life that is permeated with the power and an enablement of the Holy Spirit so that we will live a life that is godly, holy, and lead others in holiness in Jesus' name as you prepare for the rupture of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen.